Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine health research digested for you. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson. I'm your host for the podcast, and joining me in our illustrious podcast studios this week is Magdio Lopez. Uh, Mag is a field extension uh, livestock specialist working within the swine extension group at the University of Missouri. Uh, Mag, thank you very much for coming on to the podcast. It's been my pleasure to, to get to know you here, but why don't you let the audience know a little bit about yourself? What's your background and how'd you get into pig production? Hello, Clayton. Thanks for the invitation. I'm so glad to you know um, speak with you. And yeah, so um, I am originally come from Honduras. Um, I came to the U.S. Um, um, in 2012 to work uh, for Smith, Smithfield Hog Production Division um, in North Carolina. Um, I worked uh, for them uh, for about 10, 10 years, um, managing soul farms, uh, uh, mainly. And um, I uh, decided in 2021 to uh, join the North Carolina State University to work uh, with uh, animal welfare uh, under the supervision of Dr. Uh, Monique Pires Garcia, and um, and recently I decided to join uh, the University of Missouri here in Columbia, Missouri, and I am, like you said, um, a swine um, extensionist. So, thanks for the invitation. Yeah, well, thanks for being here, Mag. I think you've got a wonderful uh, background. The perspective of managing a, a pig farm, I think, brings a lot of credibility to your animal welfare work. And I know that Monique's lab has been focused on pain control. Um, as I understand it, as you were doing your research there within that lab, you kind of focused on pain control and specifically looking at pain as it relates to castration um, and what we can do about it. You want to talk to us a little bit, Mag, about your research project what, you know, pain medication options you evaluated for those castrated pigs and, you know, what did you learn about it? Yes. So, yeah, our lab was uh, is focused on trying to find uh, ways of uh, mitigate uh, castration pain. Um, as we all know, you know, castration um, uh, puts uh, the piglets in a lot of stress. Um, um, and it can increase uh, the morbidity and can increase also mortality. Um, so we have an opportunity um, for the industry in general to provide to the industry um, feasible options uh, for controlling pain. So we did um, two uh, uh, trials um, and those uh, have been published uh, already. Uh, the first one, um, we looked at uh, transdermal flunixin megalomene um, and using, um, we evaluated the efficacy of this product um, using a new uh, uh, validated pain scale. This uh, pain scale has been uh, recently validated in the U.S. The paper came out around April of this year, 23, and the um, uh, the pain scale basically evaluates the behavior of these animals, and uh, uh, it has uh, five uh, behavioral items. Uh, the first one is posture. Um, the second one is activity. The third one is interaction with uh, uh, with its surrounding or uh, or ceilings. Uh, the fourth one is uh, miscellaneous behavior, and the fifth one is um, attention to the um, to the affected area. So, so the pain, every item can go from zero, which is considered normal behavior when piglets are sleeping, or uh, three, that when piglet is showing that painful behavior. So the maximum uh, range for um, every piglet that is being scored um, is from zero uh, to 15. Um, so 15 will be considered the most painful behavior. And we, uh, we used um, a video that they were masked and they were trimmed at four minutes uh, clip, which makes, you know, to uh, save a lot of time. So we looked at uh, transdermal. Uh, in, in conclusion, transdermal uh, flonixin was able uh, to reduce um, um, the behavioral scoring. When we compare uh, uh, piglets treated with, uh, with no drug, um, so basically, uh, transdermal phonixin after 
24 hours uh, of the administration was able to reduce uh, these pain scores. So we have a feasible option. Later, we can talk about a little bit about the economics uh, of it that um, that we um, that I have published uh, as well in my thesis. Um, so we can we can dig on. So uh, the good news is for producers, um, just in case consumers uh, are requiring us to do something uh, in regards to uh, uh, pain castration, we have Tridermal Flumixin applied. Uh, 24 hours prior castration as an option to control pain. So the second uh, um, um, paper, we looked at um, um, flunixin meglumin as well um, and inguinal, uh, buffered inguinal um, lidocaine um, as an option. We have several treatments, uh, unimodal analgesia and multimodal analgesia. And um, uh, basically, um, with uh, this uh, uh, in this uh, uh, trial, we have um, compare uh, piglets uh, treated with with no uh, with no drug as well as a control as a truly control. And uh, basically, what we found is uh, um, uh, intranasal flunixin uh, we uh, was able to reduce cortisol level. So, um, unfortunately, we didn't find any um, uh, significant results for um, um, Beaufort lidocaine uh, treated in the Iguinal Canal. Um, but the good news, again, is, is like uh, uh, when we compare uh, intranasal flunixin meglumin with things that's treated uh, with no drug, uh, we see significant results. And uh, intranasal flunixin meglumin was able to reduce um, cortisol level. So again, uh, it's another option that uh, we have um, available uh, uh, for producers uh, and the industry in general uh, if they want to do something uh, about pain castration. Um, in terms of the economics, we did an economic. Um, um, uh, analysis, cost analysis to see what the cost will be and depending on if you're willing to handle the piglet twice or you just want to hit uh, the handle the piglet once, um, the cost for this protocol, pain management protocol, can range for from 5 to 11 cents per, per week pig. So it's, you know, we, we I, I, I acknowledge that we are going through a uh, tough time with, you know, big uh, prices, but um, there are some options there, and I think they are um, feasible for for us. Mag, talk to us a little bit about the uh, scoring system. You mentioned that there's five different pieces of it, and you also mentioned that it was, uh, if I remember right, validated, a validated scoring system. Could you talk a little bit about how uh, a welfare scoring system like that becomes validated? You know, who is the validation? Um, who, who recognizes that validation? Give us a little more background on that. Yes. So it, basically when I say validation, it has to be published, you know, in an international journal. We publish this in, um, in one of them. Um, and um, it's incredible the amount of statistical anal analysis that goes uh, behind it. Um, so uh, we we use um, uh, sort of um, uh, like analysis cluster analysis to determine um, which of the behaviors um, were in fact measuring uh, pain correctly. Um, in fact, I'm going to give an example. For example, uh, Norsin, um was at the beginning uh, of the analysis, but Basically, based on the statistical analysis, it, it was decided that nursing is, is not a good uh, way of measuring pain because piglets will nurse whether they are in pain or not. So um, there is a lot of uh, statistical analysis. There is, a, uh, for example, an intra-class uh, uh, coefficient correlation that measures how, mo how well the observer is uh, scoring this uh, uh, piglets and we compare among all the scorers and 
you have to reach certain level level of uh, certain level of um, uh, so for a statistical analysis in order for you to say this scorer this person is really good at looking at pain. Um, otherwise, we will have to be removed uh, out of the the trial. So, believe me, there is a lot of you know robust statistical analysis before we can say this uh, tool is really measuring tool um, measuring pain and is not you know cannot be confounded with something else. United Animal Health has been innovating nutrition that feeds the animals that feed the world since 1956. Now a multinational ag biosciences company, we help people impact the health of their animals with less labor, less variation, less drag, less challenge, and less natural resources. Learn more at unitedanh.com. Well, thank you very much, Mag. I appreciate you sharing uh, not only your research results, but also your practical application tips. Um, really appreciate you coming on the show today. Thank you, Clayton. I'm glad to uh, be in here and, you know, anytime. Uh, if you would like to invite me, I'll be here. So looking forward to, uh, to speaking with you. Well, Mag, we couldn't do it with our wonderful audience. Um, and to the audience, thank you very much for listening in to the Swine Health Black Belt podcast. Uh, please check us out at swinehealthblackbelt.com. Subscribe to the podcast so you catch every one of our new episodes that comes out each week. Uh, for uh, Magdiel Lopez, I'm Clayton Johnson. Thanks for joining us. And have a great rest of your day. Hey, everybody. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine health related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it, share it with us, please feel free to email the research to hello at wisenetics.com. That's H-E-L-L-O at W-I-S-E-N-E-T-I-X dot com.